thanks for joining me for day five of our favorite fabrics for fall event and today we are going to be going over some of those last few kind of medium weight knits before you get into the heavier fabrics which are your fleeces your chenilles your heavier knits now the ones that we're going to talk about today are going to be a techno crepe a liverpool a bullet knit and then kind of an outlier but that's going to be velvet so all of the fabrics you see today are from Sincerely Riley, who generously sponsored this event. And all of the um, these types of fabrics can be found on her website, which is SincerelyRiley.com. Of course, all, the fa all of the patterns that you see are Ellie and Mac patterns, and those are going to be found at EllieandMac.com. If you guys have any questions about the fabric or the patterns or anything, feel free to pop those in the comments, and we'll go ahead and get started. So the variations that we're going to be talking about today is a techno crepe, this one is a bullet knit, and this one is a Liverpool. Now all of these are a fairly similar weight. They're going to be heavier than your double brushed poly, your bamboo, your rayon spandex, those kinds of things. They are a thicker fabric. But they are, to me, it feels almost a little squishy. They are going to be airy enough that they're not a heavy weight fabric. They're certainly not a bottom weight, but you can use them for joggers. We'll get into that a little bit more later. Um, now, your variations, what's the, the difference between these, is going to be a bullet knit has raised bumps across the face of it. And this one also has a digitally printed uh, design on it. So really amazing texture on this and that would be perfect for you know a going home sweater or uh, your joggers or something like that. Now your Liverpool is going to have a texture to it as well but it's not going to be as defined as a bullet knit. And then your crepe is actually going to have that creped texture on the face of the right side of your fabric. Now what you can do to kind of play around with some of these textures, what I did here is use the crepe on the body and the sleeves, the crepe side out, and then I flipped it and I used the wrong side out for your neckline and your bands across the bottom. Now you have the same color, but because there's that variation in texture, it provides a really interesting kind of accent. So the stretch on these fabrics is going to be great four-way stretch and I will show you that here. Now we've got our salvage edge down this side here. So your horizontal stretch is going to be really, really great. Your vertical stretch um, along the salvage is also good vertical stretch. So these are really awesome because of that stretch and recovery, they're generally poly spandex blends, and so they've got really good recovery, so you can use them for your more fitted garments. So in addition to top, uh, more structured tops, like the Be Genuine, and you can use any fabric just about for that pattern, and it'll give you a different look. But if you want something a little bit more structured, these are fantastic uh, fabrics for that. Now this one right here is our Be Captivating, and I absolutely love this weight of fabric for your form-fitting uh, garments like this, and that is because it because it's a little bit thicker of fabric, it's very smoothing. So it gives you just a really nice kind of smooth effect on the body when you're wearing it. And it also has great recovery. So you can use those form-fitting patterns and not have to worry about it loosening up or growing or anything like that over the course of the day. Your Good Vibes joggers are going to be just gorgeous in this weight of a fabric. Um, your Jackets, you could definitely use it for jackets like your zip it, those kinds of things. Really, it's super, super versatile. The only thing that I would shy away from would be uh, gathering. So moving on to your velvets. Now, a lot of people don't love sewing with velvet because you can find that it is a bit slippery. Now, there are a few different things that you can do to fix that, and we'll talk about the tips and tricks for velvet in just a second. 
but I wanted to show you. So velvet is a beautiful, beautiful textured fabric. It's got a really nice shine to it. It is going to be um, a beautiful drape of a fabric and it just hangs so, so nicely. And it is a fantastic choice for fall and especially getting into those holidays, kind of making some transitional garments like your dresses for layering or tops or anything like that. And velvet is wonderful for that. It's similar to if you're working with a directional print. If you had a floral that all of the flowers were facing up, then you're of course going to want to focus on cutting all of your pattern pieces with the um, flowers facing up so that they're not upside down on one arm or something like that. Now the same kind of thing applies to velvet and that is that the nap of the velvet goes in a certain direction. So what you want to have is when you cut your piece out, when you go with, when you run your hand down it, it's going to be smooth. If you run your hand up, it's going to be kind of scratchy. So you want all of the nap to be smooth from top going to the bottom. And this is really important with velvet, not only because when you're wearing it, you can probably feel the difference if it's not all going the right way, but the way the light hits the nap, it will be obvious if for some reason you've got it going one direction this way and another or the opposite direction on, you know, the bodice versus the skirt or something. It can actually look like different colors and you don't want that. You want to keep everything uniform. Additionally, when you're cutting, if you are finding that folding the fabric in half and is causing uh, your fabric to slip as you're cutting, you can cut single layer. So what you would do is hold your pattern piece and either pin it or use your pattern weights and cut it. And then that line where it's on the fold, just carefully lift it up and flip it over. And when you're cutting single layer like that, you're very much more likely to get a nice even cut because it's not slipping around on you. And you're also going to ensure that that nap is completely directional on the entire piece. The biggest issue that we have with velvet is that when you put your two pieces together and you run them through your machine, they can slip. And that means that it pushes the fabric unevenly on one side more than the other and it kind of stretches out. So when you get to the bottom of your garment, all of a sudden one piece is here and the other piece is way down here and they're super uneven. And you can't have that because it's stretched out your fabric. It's not going to lay right. You can't just trim it off. It doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. So what you can do is if you're using a sewing machine, use a lot of pins. Now I always sew over my pins. That's my personal preference. Some people don't like to do that. So another option that you can do is using wonder tape. This stuff is amazing. Totally in my mind, a requirement for sewing velvet. And once you get the feel for your velvet, uh, what you can do if you don't want to go running wonder tape or wa washable wonder tape all the way down every one of your seams, then all I do is I just cut off a tiny little square and I put it between the two fabrics at the very beginning of where I'm going to start to sew. So all I'll do is just put it together right there so that it doesn't slip right at that beginning because that's where personally I run into the most issues is it pushing it. Uh, pushing those two layers apart right out of the gate. So I only use a small square right at the beginning and then I use pins the rest of the way down. Now if you are serging, you can also use the wonder tape and just serge right over the top of it. And so you can hand baste all the way down just really, really quickly, quickly in and out your seam and that is going to be your best method for making sure that your fabrics don't slip as you're sewing them. So when you're sewing with velvet, pattern recommendations are going to be simpler silhouettes. You can gather with the fabric, but because it is a little bit heavy, heavier and you run into that slippage really, really easily, I don't generally recommend it. Now what I like to do is do more simple of tops. I'm wearing right now the tulip dress and rather than doing the two fronts with the gathered side, I just did a single front and it's a really simple, just elegant bodycon type dress. And you can see that because it is simple, it accentuates the texture of the fabric a bit more because you do have just this beautiful, beautiful texture 
that you want to show off in your velvet. Thank you guys for joining me for day five of our favorite fabrics for fall event. I hope that this series is interesting and informative for you and that you maybe learn some tricks on how to sew with fabrics that maybe you haven't sewn with or have had issues sewing with in the past. Today we talked about our Liverpool, our scuba, our bullet knits, and our velvet, and they are really, really fun textured fabrics for creating those awesome outfits that will transition you through the fall season and into winter. And I hope that you guys are excited about using these. Again, all the fabrics that we talked about today are Sincerely Riley fabrics, and that is SincerelyRiley.com. All of the patterns that we talked about are Ellie and Mac, which is LieAndMac.com. So hopefully these inspired you, and I hope that you guys have very, very happy sewing. Mm -hmm.